Nice. About 135 kilometers north of Kampala, 15 kilometers northeast of Nakasongola town, and 3 kilometers from the banks of Lake Choga is this Uganda People's Defense Forces manufacturing arm. It is part of Luero Industries Limited, the subsidiary of National Enterprise Corporation, the manufacturing and engineering arm of UPDF. In light of oxygen scarcity in hospitals across the country, coupled with the surge in COVID-19 cases, the Uganda People's Defense Forces manufacturing arm is enhancing the country's capability to access medical oxygen. It was indeed a beehive of activity at the plant. Clad in white overalls, servicemen were seen refilling hundreds of cylinders with life-saving oxygen. These are brought here on appointment from hospitals, both government and private, across the country. Stephen Kavma, a production assistant at the facility, where oxygen is purified before it's being put in cylinders, explains the process. This is a liquid oxygen plant. So basically we have two compartments. We have a compressor compartment and a technological compartment. The purification block, uh, basically we remove carbon dioxide, we remove water, and we remove any other hydrocarbons that might be in the air. So from the, uh, from the purification block, the next phase is to we super cool the air to, to very low temperatures at about negative uh, 183 temp, uh, degrees, because uh, that is the temperature at which you can get uh, liquid air. And uh, we, to do that, we use the heat exchanger and an expander. Once we have the liquid air, we take it to the columns. In the columns, a process called fractional distillation takes place there. And uh, the more dense uh, liquid goes to the bottom and the less dense goes to the top. In this case, oxygen is more dense than nitrogen, so it's collected at the bottom and the nitrogen is at the top. Uh, but in the first column, the purity of the oxygen is about 45%, so we send it to a second column for further fractional distillation. In the second column, we are able to get the 99% of oxygen. And uh, once we have 99% liquid oxygen, there are two, two, two routes we can take. We can either store it in the reservoir, or we can gasify it by pumping it at the ramp. So if you gasify it, at the ramp, we fill the cylinders with our oxygen gas. If we are giving out liquid, we just empty through this uh, reservoir. And in, in this, we have four modes. We can produce liquid oxygen, which we'll see. We can also produce gaseous oxygen, which is more or less like producing liquid oxygen, then you gasify and put in the cylinders. The same thing with nitrogen. We can produce uh, liquid nitrogen and also uh, gaseous nitrogen. The plant has capacity to fill between 240 to 275 40 liter gas cylinders per day at a modest fee of 38,000 shillings each. If you, if you come with your cylinder, we charge you 38,000 shillings. Yes. For a refill. But if you don't have a cylinder, then you'll have to put a deposit of, of 2 million shillings so that when you bring back our cylinder, then we shall be able to. According to Kavma, they have supplied both government and private. We have supplied actually very many hospitals. One is, the first one is Bombo, Bombo Military Hospital, which we have supplied very many cylinders actually. Then uh, LifeLink Hospital is a private hospital, which is in Kampala. Then there's Nigeria Hospital job supplied. Then a group from West Nile, actually. Then the private hospitals, uh, we, we, those we could contact, uh, we are actually dealing with them. Those that you contact us? Yeah, those who contacted us, like the one at Najera and the link, we, we, we dealt with them. And it is uh, common knowledge now that we are able also to intervene if you have a shortage, most of the hospitals are aware. But all government hospitals, we are intervening through the Minister of Health, the PS. She calls the Navy Hospital. Yes. She called them and directed them to deliver cylinders here. Arua Hospital, the same. 
Morago, it is UPDF which helped. John Merrick Manyane, the quality control manager, says they have mechanisms to ensure there are over 99.9 percent .9 purified oxygen is not contaminated. You know in the marketing there could be also those gimmicks of mixing up products because of killing products people. So we must go and test. If it's our oxygen, we must go back to the analyzer and feed it in and see the percentage. If there's a claim that it is low, see what it is giving. If it's lower than what we produce, we also see was the cylinder tampered with before it came back to us. Because I think that happened with products on the market before you receive it. The amazing involvement comes at a time when COVID-19 infections continue to ravage the country and the need for life-saving gas during the health crisis. Mainly it was our Air Force effort. But when the pandemic came up, we saw, we saw an opportunity to participate in uh, bridging the gap. The general manager of Ruwero Industries Limited, Major Geno Sabit Mzei, tells us what needs to be done now in service improvement. The cost of cylinders is high and storage. The cost of production is high because the power, even fuel, if you're relying on a generator. The other issue that I think not necessarily related to production is the issue of distribution of these cylinders and management. The logistical aspects of transportation in a time here for, for, for filling, then back to where they are needed. So there the, the, the needs to be some logistical arrangement that helps coordination. General Sabit, however, says despite challenges, there is work in progress even after defeating COVID-19. He says in the long run, the Wero Industries is looking at manufacturing gas cylinders. Oxygen is needed for various high mortality conditions. I'm not a medical personnel, but I just picked this one from that report. And they gave some figures here. So I wanted you to know that actually, even without COVID, oxygen is a serious requirement in many other ailments. One of them is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. They abbreviate it as COPD. Now they are saying that the average treatment time for this disease is seven days. And the total oxygen required in liters is 40,320. Cylinders per patient, 5.9. The other example is pulmonary edema. Treatment period, five days. Total oxygen required, 21,600 liters. Cylinders, 3.2. But the cylinders depend on the capacity of the cylinder. Mm -hmm. Then pneumonia. These diseases are going to stay with us, whether it is now or not. Pneumonia, adult severe. Average treatment time, two days. Total oxygen required, medical oxygen, 11,520 liters. Pulmonary hypertension, two days, same amount. Pneumonia infant, that is for children. Severe, two days. Total amount, 5,760. Asthma. One day, and the average oxygen required is 7,200 liters. Then there is the one they call neonatal respiratory syndrome. This is also for the other one. One day, and they are estimating 720 liters. In the same report, they indicated that oxygen is critical for treating a number of life-threatening conditions that collectively account for 1.75 million deaths in sub-Saharan Africa annually. Now that is one side of the demand. Now I also read, a re it was a press release from Mulago. I think most of you must have read. They were responding to, I think, an article by the Monitor with clear figures of how much oxygen 
is supplied through the the tubes and the supplementary oxygen they give through cylinders. So the demand for medical oxygen, forget even other applications of oxygen, for medical oxygen is actually still very high and the, the supply capacity in sub-Saharan Africa, forget Uganda alone, is still low. In that same report, if you can access it, they were talking about the oxygen utilization in developed nations vis-a-vis -vis in sub-Saharan Africa. So you would see that actually other countries had uh, known that it's an important issue and they had put a serious efforts towards solving it. But still also you can see how this uh, too much demand has exposed uh, people to danger. So I think it will continue to really be relevant. But in any case, with the other interventions, I know that COVID will be brought down and uh, the pressure will reduce. But all these other ailments, I don't think they will go away. So we shall still be able to support that effort. The Army is also manufacturing masks, sanitizers, and liquid soap, part of the arsenals to rid the country of COVID-19 pandemic.